Hello everyone, today another recap of my another title Tuesday played two days ago. This time once again with new format I will firstly talk about first half of the game off stream, offline as I'm talking to you guys now and then in the very crazy moment I will switch back to the stream so that you can know my thoughts in a rush of blood with emotions and I believe this will be a perfect setup for today's video. So, without further ado, let's jump straight into this game. Okay, so opponent started with the move d4, I opted for a move d6, I tried it also in the first game of the tournament, or the second one, I don't remember really. Um, this is the fourth one. The idea is that I wanted to achieve a quite passive but solid setup strategically, uh, that I know about from a book about strategy so overall it is completely sound and should work however in both previous round and in this one uh, opponent opted with e4 i was hoping more for a, a setup like this when e4 is played maybe now meaning that it is a very closed uh, position and then i'm happy with having the e5 uh, move targeting the center of the board however if opponent switches and goes for the e4 move right now we are getting the pierce defense which i'm not that familiar with and in which this setup does not quite work also chess.com has some bug so whenever i draw the color the arrow or switch variations the notation disappears i'm not sure that what's that about i will do a little trick okay now we're back so um how to continue i continued with knight f6 knight b to d7 still uh, with the idea that I am still pushing for e5, however, my opponent in both games are replied with f4. As you can see, the notation is gone again. Anyway, um, at this point I might have tried e5. The problem with it is that after all the exchanges, uh, my king would not uh, castle anymore, perhaps. However, the good thing about it would be that the opponent has isolated pawn without queens on the board, so it's strategic... Uh, Plus, however, white does not have to take. They can just e try to e apply more pressure to e5 pawn. And now the problem is that I don't really have the option to protect it since queen e7 move would not be looking that good. I believe that you agree with me. Uh, it takes away the place for a bishop, uh, goes away from protecting the c7 pawn, which might be useful at some point in the game. So it's not that ideal. Therefore, I thought about preparing e5 move. And uh, that's why I've played move c6, which is considered a mistake. Not sure why. A computer suggests that e5 should have been played, but as I've said, it's not pleasant either. Um, knight f3 was played, and now I went with e5. You might ask me, if e5 was but one move ago, why would it be uh, good now? And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> the idea is that, uh, as I've said at the beginning, I was hoping for such setup but with the pawns, uh, white pawns placed differently because I wanted the additional pawn to be placed on c4, not f4. But nevertheless, I think I thought, okay, even though the pawn is there, I may try e5 because I remembered a line similar to this one in which after, let's say, many exchanges, I will be able to attack the pawn in this setup or in this setup when additionally queens goes off the board and I threatened with some forks, etc. However, uh, I mixed up the variations because the variation I was thinking about mostly uh, goes like this c6 now, and after f4 now, queen a5. With that move, I am pinning the knight, so maybe white has to react somehow, and not only that, I'm having, uh, I'm keeping an eye to on e5 square, therefore e5 might be possible. Obviously, after all the exchanges, I would not like perhaps to take with the queen because always knight f3 will come with a tempo but then i can just jump with the knight to g4 and then grab the knight with uh, the pawn with the knight should be working but as i've said i've mixed up the variations so i played uh, differently knight bd7 c6 then e5 and the problem of this whole sequence is that in here we we got here before in the variations but i missed the e6 possibility e6 just gives the pawn back with the idea that it weakens my king a lot. The pawn is not no longer on f7, 
So the e6 pawn is uh, weak Im himself, itself, and also my king will, it, uh, will be weak. However, after e6, white had to find a follow-up, and this follow-up would be knight g5. Knight g5 with a simple task of attacking both knight and a pawn at the same time. And even though I might survive for now with the move like this, which will uh, protect the knight, protect the pawn and suggest a queen trade, and after a queen trade there is no knight f7 because this knight also protects the square. As you can see there are so many tactics involved that I'm holding just, just, just. I, I, I am close to uh, be lost. Uh, therefore I'm not sure if I first of all would find it and even I, if I did the position is not great either. So this is the whole sequence uh, that was missed by me. Therefore a, e5 was not a good uh, move. So continuing. With the game, opponent did not spot knight g5, he just played move h3, kicking away the knight, but I'm happy with this, I can just simply retreat here. And after bishop f4, I spotted the idea that with such pawn, with no f pawn, there is a possibility to make use of those weak squares with the queen h4 move. But because the knight protects the square, I firstly want to exchange the knight with the idea that after g takes e 3 I can deliver the double attack and win the game. However, obviously, white... Um, took with a queen, meaning that the bishop is protected, and not only that, making way for the opponent to castle long. And the problem for me is that I am lacking the development. Look at this, guys. Uh, my only piece that is developed is a queen. I don't consider the knight as a developed piece because um, it doesn't have the purpose here, meaning that I still have to make many, many moves in order to um, be fine in this game. So that's why computer does not like it, that's why I didn't like it, but I just tried to continue playing uh, normally, which is bishop e7 with the idea of castling and slowly getting there in terms of development. My opponent had a nice option of playing bishop d6 that I've mentioned during the stream, with the idea, idea being that uh, he opens the f-file, not allowing me to castle, making my king stay in the center, also trying to exchange my king's defender, and it would happen, after bishop d6, bishop d6, I saw move knight e5, and during the stream I was also going further into the variation, and I've said that after queen f4, trying to keep an eye on the knight and the castle, I have knight f7. Knight f7 would kick away the rook, and cover the f5, allowing me to castle. However, I did not see that white might play queen g3, hitting the knight and the pawn, and this would be a far bigger uh, threat since knight f7 is not working anymore because of the queen g7 and I cannot take opponent's rook without mine being taken and that's where the problem is. Anyway, my opponent did not play a bishop d6 which I believe is a inaccuracy practically because after queen g3 which is considered as a top move by engine by humans I don't feel like uh, it's the greatest of moves because I can now just simply castle and then as I've said slowly develop all my other pieces. And the game continues like this. Bishop h6, pretty nice, but also pretty simple trick, not doing much for white, so I just defended it with putting my bishop to the better place. Bishop c4, knight e5, so as you can see, my knight is becoming more active, my bishop is becoming more active, my king is becoming safe. So all in all, each move I am uh, better and better. And after queen h8, my opponent played strangely looking move rook f1. Why is strangely looking? Well, because my idea of king h8 was to go away from the pin so that I can take the bishop. And rook h f1 does not directly protect the opponent uh, from me taking the bishop, but it involves a little bit of tactic there, which I calculated, as I've said, during the stream. And this is the moment, guys, when we will switch to the stream. So not only you can give me some feedback on how did you like this analysis uh, off stream with me explaining with all the arrows and, and so on, comparing to the explanations in the stream. I'm curious about your uh, comments on this, but without spoiling uh, much more, let's just go straight into the stream. Here, 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 here. Okay, I can try to draw the arrows as Hikaru do, but I don't have that much time. So I will just play the moves and explain the variation as it goes, because I believe this is what will happen. So here we suck on f6, take on e5, now I have this check. 
queen g5, suggesting queen trade, protecting the rook, not being afraid of those checks. So overall, I think I just got the material advantage, but surely for the price of uh, having worse king. But that's the case sometimes, you just need to deal with it. Also, he cannot just uh, stop checking me since he himself is not that safe there. So queen c7 might be coming, then rook f7, and this checkmate is still there, so... Hmm. I feel like he has no choice rather than exchanging, really. Which is quite fortunate, I did not expect it. Uh, so queen trade, a4, rook f8, trying to get rid of this rook. Okay, what now? Okay. Okay, let's go for some tactics, guys. I have a very tasty looking move. Queen takes d8, queen d8, bishop d7, queen a8, rook f1, queen d8, queen e5, queen f6, queen d8, queen d8, bishop d7, queen h4, rook f1 still works. Queen c7, queen a5 does not help either. Okay, let's take it. Let's have some fun. Oh, that's nasty. By me. Back rank weakness, guys. If any of you follow my Facebook, you will know that there are puzzles there for this motif. So as you can see, I studied them and look at it. Look at the variation, the sequence that I found. I believe it's working perfectly, therefore I'm really, really proud of this move. Will there be a brilliant? Yes, yes, brilliant move, guys. So here, here, and I cover another brilliant move. That's amazing. I covered d5 so that the knight on d1 will not be protected by the queen. That was the whole idea. Okay, let's look at it again. One brilliant, second brilliant, in a row. This will make the recap. So guys, I was not lying, right? It made the recap. It made the recap with all the analysis, arrows, variations, all the good stuff that you like. Let me know in the comments what do you think in general about this new format. So mixing up the analysis and then stream, not all together. I'm curious about that. Also, I can assure you that this week there will be the whole new fresh series coming out on my channel, meaning that if you are not already subscribed, please do it now and so that you will not miss any of my future videos and leave a like so that I will know that you uh, watch the video until this point. Without saying anything else, enjoy your day and we'll see each other during the weekend. Bye!